Hi everyone, it's Veronica and this is going to be a video about products I regret buying. And I actually wasn't going to film today because I'm not feeling that well, but I was kind of like, you know, going around my house, like moping around, like laying on the couch doing nothing and I wanted to clean today, but I was not being productive so I decided that at least filming a video would be somewhat productive. And before I get into this video, um, you know, it's not necessarily that these products are awful or, you know, or that they don't work. It's just that I found other products that I prefer to these. So I wish I just would have not spent my money on them because I keep going back to the other products I love. So um, I'm going to go through each product, but I just wanted to put that as a disclaimer that I'm not really trying to trash these products or saying they're horrible or that they suck. I simply like other products better. And the first one I'm going to start with, and I just have the box. I couldn't find the actual bottle in my bathroom, which is very odd, but it's the, it's a new product by Neutrogena and the box looks like this. It's called their ultra gentle soothing lotion. It has SPF 15 and Neutrogena claims that this product is actually going to make your skin less sensitive over time. Um, my problem with this is I already use their sensitive lotion um, as a facial moisturizer that doesn't have SPF. And my problem with this is number one, it smells awful. Um, you know, it really has that sunscreeny weird smell and I just feel like products formulated for sensitive skin shouldn't really be scented. And number two, um, when you apply it on your skin, like throughout the day, you can tell it affects how your makeup looks and it just, it gives your skin that like sunscreeny appearance and I don't like that. So I definitely regret buying this and I don't like this product at all. Not sure if it works, if the claims that after seven days your skin will be less sensitive. I'm not sure because I never tried it long enough, but I just don't like it. So regret buying that. The next thing, and this is a popular one, so this surprised me, it's that it's a 10 Miracle Leave-In product. You know, I'll use this occasionally when I do a blowout, but to me, um, the Oribe Royal Blowout is a thousand times better. Um, I don't know, this just didn't seem to make a huge difference when I blowed up my hair. It didn't seem to make a huge difference in how smooth it was or damage repair or anything like that. You know, when I use a product and I don't notice a difference after a few times of using it, I just kind of think I'm just spraying something in my hair for no reason. So it's a 10 miracle. Sorry, it wasn't miraculous for me. So regret buying that. Um, the next one is actually a Bumble and Bumble product. And typically I love Bumble and Bumble's products, but this one, the really thickening serum. Um, you know, I don't hate this. It's just kind of like the same thing as the It's a 10 Miracle. I just don't think it really made a difference in how thick my hair felt or over time. Basically after every blowout, it was one of the first products I put in and I put it into my ends, just like my stylist advised me. And I just felt like this really didn't make that much of a difference. I didn't notice any repair to my split ends or them getting thicker or anything. That said, I'm gonna use up the bottle because I feel like it, it can't do any harm, so. Um, I'll definitely finish that up, but I don't love it. I don't know that I'd repurchase it, I guess is what I'm saying. The next thing is the Cosmedicine Medimat, and this is actually super old. It's been kind of sitting in a basket under my sink for well over a year now, so I haven't used it in a while. Um, but the reason I'm including this in my products I regret buying video is because I think the Origins Zero Oil Moisturizer is much better at um, keeping your skin matte than the Cosmedicine Medi Matte. And I actually used to really like this um, when I was using it back in the day, but I think the Origins is better and I like the smell better and everything. So I'm not gonna repurchase this ever unless they like change it or something, but I doubt it. I really like the Origins product. The next thing is actually something I didn't buy. I used points um, at Sephora to get this and it's the Too Faced I love palette and it features like colors from all different palettes that they came out with. This is a tough one for me because I think Too Faced um, eyeshadow is good quality. I think this palette has good colors. Um, I, you know, really pretty. They have shimmery and matte tones in there. The reason I'm including it in this video is because I don't use this product. I'm not reaching for it. You know, some of the colors in there are colors I just don't use. And I'm not really like an eyeshadow person. I really only use eyeshadow to line my lower um, lash line. And then I do like a, a very nude like skin tone color on my whole eyelid and that's it. Um, so I just don't find myself reaching for this, but I don't dislike it really either because 
I don't really use it. I've used it a couple times and I thought the quality was good and everything, but if I'm not reaching for it, then there's kind of no point in owning it. So that's why I'm including it in this video. But I have to say, I do generally like Too Faced products and I do like the eyeshadows in here. I just don't use it. So like I said in the beginning of this video, you know, this isn't just products I regret buying. It's more like I'm either not using them or I haven't found myself reaching for them. So that's one of them. The next is the MAC So Sweet So Easy um, Cream Blush. It's actually quite a nice color. Let's Oh, I haven't used it in a while, so it's, it actually is a beautiful pink. Don't know if you can see that. Um, I guess the reason I'm including this is because I never use it or reach for it. And, um, you know, I tend to be a fan of powder blush over, okay, the more I'm looking at it, it's actually a beautiful pink, but um, I, I'm not as much of a cream blush person as I am powder blush. And it's not that I don't like this or it's not a good product. It's just that I don't use it. So it's like I regret buying it because it just sits there. Although now that I'm seeing the beautiful color um, on my hand as I'm looking at it now, I may, I may try to reconnect with this product because I'm seeing it and I do really think it's a beautiful shade of pink, but I don't use it. So, you know, I had to include it in this video. The next one, and this is one I really regret buying. It's the Stila custom color blush i feel like i reviewed this on my blog before and i said i loved it i mean i wore it a few times but i just look how pink that is i don't know if you can see how hot pink that is but there it is a swatch of it um it's that one right there um you know i've worn this a few times it's supposed to like color adjust to your skin tone and you know depending on the warmth of your skin and everything in the ph level it's not, I just don't think it's really that great of a blush. I feel like over time, like as you're wearing it throughout the day, it doesn't wear super well. I, I don't find myself reaching for it. Um, it just sits in a drawer, honestly, with not even with my other organized makeup. It just sits in a drawer and I never reach for it. I never use it because I find other products like Bobbi Brown's Peony Blush to be a lot better. The next one is Tarte's Charmed um, Lip what is it called? Natural Lip Stain Pencil with Lip Surgeons. And that's a swatch of it right there. Um, you know, I just, there's so many other better lip glosses that I own that I just, again, this just sits in a drawer that I have stuff that I never use. Um, you know, it's not a horrible product. It's, it's quite moisturizing. Um, you know, it blends well on the skin and everything. Again, I just don't find myself reaching for it, so I regret spending the money on it because I never use it, whereas I have so many wonderful lip glosses that I do use. Um, and speaking of lip glosses, I actually got this in a back to MAC, and it's a MAC Dazzle Glass, and the color is called Rags to Riches. And it has like some blue um, shimmer in it. That's it, that's it right there. I don't know if you can really see it on the underside of my hand there. Um, the reason I regret buying this is because I don't really think that this color suits me. Usually I use the Dazzle Glass in the color called Baby Sparks, which I love. And I actually wore that on my wedding day over my lipstick. And, you know, it looks nice when you swatch it, but I actually just don't really think like this is a great or flattering color. It's a little out there. It's something you could really only wear in the evening because of the blue reflex. And I just sometimes... You know, I've talked about how I'm really cold all the time, and sometimes my lips actually have a blue tinge to them. Like if I do, if, you know, if I don't have any product on or I just have a really light product on my lips, my lips actually get a blue tinge on them when I get really cold. So I feel like the blue shimmer in this accentuates that. So that's why I regret getting that. And technically I didn't buy it, but I did back to MAC it. So I could have gotten something different. Um, another product, and I didn't want to actually mention this product because I don't think it's a bad product. And it's the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. And it, it's, um, it's basically like something you use to highlight or set your makeup under your eyes. And it's supposed to really just give you a bright, brightened effect. The reason I don't reach for this is because I think there's products that do a better job. Like my Maybelline um, Dark Circle Eraser for the under eyes. I feel like because that has a pink tone, it brightens much better than this product. However, I don't dislike this product or hate it, or I don't even really regret buying it, but I just don't use it because there's better products. So, um, you know, I think for some people, this is definitely like a holy grail product. It gets pretty good reviews, but for me, I just 
have found um, other products to be better. The next one, and this is also something I didn't buy. Um, my mother-in-law actually got this for free. Um, I don't know, she was like at a drugstore and it was like, if you buy something, you get something free. And it's the Telescopic Explosion Mascara by L'Oreal. Has that like weird little, um, don't know if you can see it, that weird little brush. The little brush head is like a little circle. Um, and I just think it's kind of weird. I don't think it really like gets you the results you want. You kind of have to like sit there with the wand and really like get in between your lashes. And also the color of the mascara looks gray. It's supposed, it's called black. It's not supposed to be gray and it definitely is gray. Um, I just don't like it, you know. I just thought the formula wasn't great. Um, the other thing I regret buying is this Dior. Okay, it doesn't have the color on it, but it, it's a Dior Addict lipstick. Oh, okay, it's number 178. It's called Urban. It was just hard to read. Now this, okay, here's my issue with this. It's a nice pink lipstick, you know. It's just nothing special. I feel like Maybelline makes a dupe of this. Like I feel like this $30 Dior lip gloss, which is, it's a beautiful pink, very like neutral color. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not worth $30. Like some products are worth paying extra money for because they're amazing. The results are amazing. This is just like so-so, you know, you put it on, you're like, oh yeah, like it's nice. But I just feel like Maybelline's um, born with it. Um, lipstick is like so similar to this that it's not worth it to spend the extra money. And yeah, the packaging is like amazing. It looks super cute in your handbag, but it's not worth $30. Okay. The next thing is the MAC Honesty Eyeshadow. It's quite a popular one. The pigmentation of it sucks. It doesn't go on well. It's splotchy. The, the glitter is uneven. It's just awful. MAC Honesty Eyeshadow sucks. I'm going to back to MAC this and bring it back to them full because it's that horrible. That's the only one that I can truly say sucks. Then this is kind of, this is Max Color Crafted Lipstick. It was from the Color Crafted Collection. And I'm gonna try to, running out of swatch room. There's a swatch right there on my arm, right there. I don't hate this. Once again, I just never wear it. It's a very bold, like light, cool pink. And um, I just don't wear it. I find myself not reaching for it. Um, you know, it's very bold. I tend to like more of like a glossy lip with like a slight hint of pink. So, you know, once again, it's not like I really regret buying it. I just, it just kind of sits there. So I feel bad that, you know, I'm not using it. Um, the next one is this Milani blush. Um, the color is called, it's a mineral powder blush. The color is called Mai Tai. This was said to be a dupe for NARS Orgasm. I just don't really love the way this applies. I don't love the color. I don't think it really suits me. And you know, I used it a couple times and I've never used it again. So, you know, kind of regret buying it. it. It was drugstore brand, so it wasn't expensive or anything. But once again, it just sits in the basket with all the other products I never use. The next one is this Got To Be Powderful Volumizing Styling Powder. And the concept is, of this is that you sprinkle it onto your hands and then you rub it and it kind of turns into like this, it's hard to describe, like a powder with a stickiness to it and then you put it on your roots and it's supposed to give you volume. I mean, I would just rather use dry shampoo or baby powder personally. I don't think that this product is so fussy and I just don't think it's that great. Although one of my friends told me recently about a similar product that she loves that really, really works. So while I don't love this, I'm gonna probably try the one that she recommended. Um, the next one is, and I've raved about this before on my blog, and this is another one that didn't really make the list because I don't reach for it, and it's the Mary Luminizer by um, the, the Balm Cosmetics. And this is actually a, a very beautiful um, gold powder highlighter. I guess my issue with this is that um, while it is beautiful and it's beautiful for the evening time, I don't really go out enough in the evening time to justify buying a highlighter like this. Um, I do have NARS um, Albatross, which is a little bit more of a white gold. So if I'm going to use a highlighter, I'll use that or I'll use more of a pinky white highlighter, which is NARS. Um, gosh, what's it called? I can't even think of it, but it's one of those um, sticks that's like a cream. 
Um, so I'll use either one of those products. I don't find myself reaching for this one because it's a little bit too gold for me now. And I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or I'm just not highlighting as much, but I just really am not reaching for this. So I felt the need to include it in this video. The next one is one, um, it's the Stila convertible color. Um, it's, it's a cream blush. The color is Petunia and it's actually a stunning color. Um, Here's the swatch for that one right there. It's like a bright, corally pink color. This was something that I really, really loved for a long time that I was using a lot. Um, again, I'm not huge into cream blush, but I kind of went through a cream blush phase and I was using this a lot and I have reviewed it on my blog a while ago and said that I loved it. It is a good formula. It's long lasting, it's thick. You can also use it on your lips. The reason I'm including this in the video is once again, I'm just not reaching for it. I'm actually starting to think that this video should have been called like products I don't use instead of products I regret buying because I feel bad saying I regret buying them because they're not, not a lot of these are like horrible products. Like a few of them, I'm like, oh, they suck, you know, like the MAC eyeshadow, but, and just that color specifically. I like other MAC eyeshadows, by the way. So I might retitle this video to say, you know, products I'm not reaching for, products I never use, um, because it's not so much that I regret buying them, because at the time I was using this and I was loving it, I just don't reach for it now and it just sits in a basket and I much prefer to have more pinky cheeks, like cool tone pinky cheeks, and this is more of a, like, corally color. So maybe in the summer I'll kind of reconnect with that one. The next one, and this is my favorite mascara, but I'm just including this kind of for fun. It's the, it's the Lash, Bla the Lash Blast Volume Mas Mascara by CoverGirl, and I accidentally bought it in the dark brown color. Don't ask me how this happened. I totally read the label. I was like looking at it pretty closely, and I came home, I opened it, and I started using it, and I thought, what the heck is this? It's the dark brown color. Ew. I don't like dark brown mascara. I don't like using any product on my lashes that's dark brown. It has to be like the blackest black one they sell. So I can't really do anything about it now that I've used it. So if anyone wants brown mascara, I'm happy to send you this one. Um, I've only used it once. Um, I'm just joking about that, by the way. That's not really sanitary. That was a joke. Um, the next one, this is kind of weird because I actually included this in my favorite pink things video, but I want to revisit this because, okay, it's the Pure Pureology Pure Volume Thickening Mist. Here's my issue with this product. In combination with another product, this is pretty great. On its own, it is an absolute disaster. Like, I was visiting my in-laws and I didn't want to bring my like big huge can of the Redken Guts 10 and I had to wash my hair while I was there. So instead of, I thought, oh, I'll bring this cute little bottle and like, I'll use this as my, you know, root volumizer. Okay. I don't know if I used too much of it or if I was like a little overzealous in my spraying, but anytime I've used this in combination with the Redken Guts 10, it's been fine. Like I'll just do a few sprays on my roots and it's fine. I think because I wasn't using the Redken, I used more sprays than usual of this and it made my hair feel disgusting. Like I cannot, it was like touching it. It was like hard and sticky and strange and it just felt greasy. It was like a combination of super dry and super greasy and crispy and weird. It, the texture of it was just completely awful. So I kind of regret buying this because I feel like it can't be used as a product on its own. It's only good if you're already using a mousse in your hair and I don't really see a purpose in that. So sorry, I usually love Pureology, but this one's a product I regret. The next one is the L'Oreal Vive Pro Smooth Gloss Serum. I actually got this um, for free uh, when I bought something at Ulta. It's a full bottle, obviously. I've only used it a couple times. I don't really like it. I mean, I just don't think it's anything special. There's other serums, um, like one by Kerastase that I love that I think are better. Um, so, regret, you know, even though I didn't buy it, I kind of regret getting this. The next one is the Joico K-Pack Split End Mender does not mend split ends. I don't think anything can mend split ends. Any product that like claims to mend split ends, no, it doesn't work. Nothing can mend split ends unless you cut them off. It can temporarily mend them, but it cannot fix them or repair them or anything. Um, so this bottle's kind of like, I would say like, you know, three quarters of the way full. I guess I just didn't find that it was making enough of a difference for me to continue using it. It's kind of like once, 
once I think a product isn't making a difference, I just take it out of my hair routine because I already use like several products before I style my hair. So if you're, you know, if it's not making the cut, it's not doing a great job, I just eliminate it. And then the next one is um, the Bumble and Bumble BB Does It All hairspray. I just think there's so many better hairsprays um, on the market than this one. And Bumble and Bumble is an expensive line. I just think this is way too light. Um, and I don't think it like smells great and I don't think it's that great on the hair. Um, I much prefer L'Oreal Elnet or even the Kenra spray, which is much stronger. Um, I don't know. I just wasn't impressed with this for, for the brand and how much money it costs. Um, I wasn't really like taken aback by how great it was. So um, I guess that's one of them. And I actually think that's everything. I'm looking around me to make sure I didn't forget anything. But anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And um, I hope this video sort of helps you make different choices. And like I said, some of these products don't suck and aren't horrible or anything, but I just find myself not using them. So if I'm not using them, I want to let you all know um, so that you'll kind of be aware like, hey, maybe I should try a different product because I do have my um, best of 2011 video and I'll link that in the Dom bar below. So maybe you'll get some ideas on what products you should invest in in that video. So until my next video, um, I'll see you then and everyone have a great weekend. Bye.